I want to go back uh, before Mila and talk about uh, a, uh, a section of your memoir, which I really didn't know that much about, your time with the presidential campaign of Eugene McCarthy. And you, you have this gripping account of you and McCarthy and the poet Robert Lowell going from town to town, drinking whiskey out of a flask uh, while uh, in between speeches of McCarthy. Talk about what drew you to the McCarthy campaign and why you eventually resigned. Uh, I, I left the AP because of my coverage on the war didn't make the bosses happy. And they reassigned me from the Pentagon to Health and Human Services. I got the message, so I quit. I was freelancing. I'd done st stuff on chemical and biological warfare by then, doing space. So I did what I did. And in late 67, I hoped, like everybody else, Bobby would run against Johnson. Because Johnson was simply gone on the war. He wasn't going to quit. And everybody knew it. Bobby Kennedy. <laughs> yeah. And Bobby didn't go. And I, my next door neighbor was across the street was Mary McGrory, a wonderful columnist. And Mary came to see me and said, Gene, Gene McCarthy is going to run. I didn't know McCarthy. He was a member of the Foreign Relations Committee, but he was a so very diffident guy. I knew he was bright. I went to see him. She said, you got to go see him. He needs help. And I go to see this guy, and he couldn't care less about the press. But I didn't know what to do. And I, I was finally convinced to go listen to him give a speech. He gave a speech in New York, and I was knocked out. You know what he talked about? He talked about the Constitution, about what, what Lyndon Johnson was doing. He was a Benedictine, very religious. And then he said, this war is immoral. And I'd never heard a politician say something that was so profoundly true to me. What's morality other than the mass murder that was going on? And so I signed on. And I didn't—the uh, staff hated the campaign, but I got along with him. I'm smart. I did a lot of work. And uh, he liked me. <coughs> you know, and, I got, and he was a, a, an amazing man. And what happened that shaped my life— he was um, from Minnesota. He was a, a farm labor party. He was from a Humphrey was a typical prototype of the FDL, they call him. They were very conservative, anti communist, but very liberal. And McCarthy was that way. Uh, um, he'd been in a monastery, very interesting guy. I liked him a lot. But there were a lot of guys hanging around, uh, um, fellow Irish Catholic buddies. And I, one of them I knew had been chief of station for the CIA in Laos. Don't ask how I knew those things, but I was getting into it. So I asked him one day, why are all these guys from the CIA around? And he told me, he said, actually, well, uh, he did favors for Jack for the CIA as a senator. <laughs> We're just—I uh, when the best— John Kennedy. John Ke the best time I had was in the plane with him. And he, his, he had a wonderful daughter named Mary, and I used to, the morning I'd check, because he was a very difficult man, very private. Very, very smart. I'd say, how is he today? One day, Mary, his oldest daughter, said to me, alienated as usual. <laughs> she, she was just dark. But, so it was just difficult. Yeah. He didn't like doing interviews. He didn't think the kids that were supporting him and masked, shaving their hair for Gene, he didn't think he owed them anything. They, they're not there for me. They're against the war. I had these fights with them all the time. But he explained to me that he, he was an anti-communist, and he would sometimes take bags of money down to certain Catholic officials, public leaders, and particularly in Latin America. What? <laughs> and he—I got to know a lot of guys in the CIA through him. So if you wonder why, when Colby says he—that little bit, that's from an, an internal paper they did. They did a history of Colby, and there's a, actually a long chapter on me, and he does say that, because I was doing domestic spying. He and says all. you knew more about the CIA I than did, but, but the that's CIA right. director Colby I, I, did. I would get him mad, because I would call up about things he didn't want to talk about. But. I got to know through McCarthy about the CIA, and then a strangest sort of connection. And so Gene was this—anyway, it was a, a learning curve, and uh, a great learning curve. And why you resigned? Um, we won and we did—we knocked out Johnson. Johnson quit in New Hampshire because we got almost 42 percent in a write-out, write-in vote. And actually, with the with the in, with the ballots from uh, from that came in later, uh, we got we beat him, and that was enough for Johnson. He quits, and then of course Bobby jumps in, heroic Bobby. And, and they tried to hire me, and I wouldn't go near him because he, he didn't come in when he should have. <laughs> I'm a I'm a purist, and so I went back to being a reporter happily. Politics is awful, and what happened is, and, and we're in Wisconsin, and he's going to win the election big there. And there's a lot of polling, and the polls showed that if he stayed away from the black community in Milwaukee— McCarthy. McCarthy. The, the, the Polish, the ethnic vote would be higher. He would get 62 percent uh, you know, against um, Johnson. But if he did the—if he marched with the black—there was a march schedule in the black community. If he marched, he would go down to 58 percent. And they convinced him not to do it. And I heard about it. 
you know, I'm running around with people like Lowell and Paul Newman, who was working, Robert, movie stars, they were really into Bob Ryan, Robert Ryan, all very bright, very committed. And we were working out of my office giving speeches. And um, I couldn't believe it, so I woke him up at six in the morning. And um, <laughs> uh, guys don't like being woken up at six in the morning in the campaign, but, and I said, and he said, it's none of your business, and I quit. I'm not he said gonna, he wasn't going to. He didn't. He wasn't going to change his. I did. I thought he didn't know what the staff was doing. There were a bunch of political guys who were already dreaming of what what job they're going to have in the White House. That so he canceled the speeches in the black community. Yeah, and I left. That was it. Mm. Um, but um, it got noisy because somebody told the New York Times about it, and so it got noisy for a day or two. But I didn't talk to anybody about it. I did talk to the book about it. Decided to hell with it. Why not tell the story? It was it was a bad move to make. But he was he was sure Bobby would win. He'd given up sort of. I thought too. But anyway. What a learning experience. I'm barely, I'm 20, 31, 32. I've already learned all this stuff about the world.